Hello, hello, and welcome to Art House Garage. I'm Andrew Sweatman, and today I'm bringing you an interview with a filmmaker named Mark Cousins. In addition to being a filmmaker, Cousins is a film critic and a film historian. I first became aware of him because of his series, The Story of Film and Odyssey, which is a 15-hour documentary series about the history of cinema. He's also the director of a handful of other films, The Eyes of Orson Welles, My Name is Alfred Hitchcock, and another film history series called Women Make Film. The story of film and Odyssey came out in 2011, and now, more than 10 years later, he's giving us a follow-up called The Story of Film, A New Generation. The first series looked at film history and innovations since the advent of cinema, but this new edition looks at modern cinema and the innovations that have happened in recent years. So he's talking about modern films, everything from Cemetery of Splendor to Beyonce's Lemonade. He talks about Midsummer, Moonlight, Under the Skin, Suspiria. He even talks about Disney's Frozen at one point. It's really all over the place. Plus, he talks about innovations like smartphones and VR and how those are affecting the movies. It's very interesting stuff. The Story of Film, A New Generation, opens in limited release today, September 9th, and then hits VOD September 20th. It is releasing on DVD October 18th, and most exciting, they have also announced a Blu-ray, including the original series, The Story of Film, and Odyssey, and this update, The Story of Film, A New Generation. No specific release date on the Blu-ray set just yet, but they've said it will be out by Christmas. I have been a fan of Mark Cousins for a while, so I was so thrilled to have the opportunity to interview him and to watch this new film, A Story of Film, A New Generation. Like before, this film is long. So the original series is 15 one-hour episodes. This is essentially two more episodes, but uh, a bit longer each, clocking in at two hours and 40 minutes total. If you've seen the original series, I think you'll like the new one as well. It's very interesting to hear him talk about modern cinema, because I'm so used to hearing his thoughts on the cinema of the past. But I really enjoyed this, and I'm excited to add that Blu-ray set to my collection in a few months' time. So without further ado, here is first the trailer for the story of film, A New Generation, followed by my interview with Mark Cousins. Which movies have captured our times? Did the Joker unsettle you? Did the Babadook scare you? Did you feel the desire in moonlight? The newness of a fantastic woman? Do you watch movies to be sped up? or dazzled, or to see anew. Our extraordinary times have brought us exceptional films. Movies that are not just making history, they're making our history. They're showing us who we are, what we want, what we fear, what we've lost and what we're still willing to fight for. Every generation has its stories. This is the story of us. I'm here with Mark Cousins, the writer, director, and photographer of The Story of Film, A New Generation. Mark, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Pleasure, Andrew. Yeah. Well, The Story of Film, A New Generation is a follow-up to your other project, The Story of Film, and Odyssey, which came out in 2011, and it looks at the history of film. And now, 10 years later, you've given us this follow-up, looking at cinema and how it's changed in recent <clears throat> years, in our times, as you say, in the film. So my first question is, why now? Did you know when you finished the story of film in Odyssey that you would one day continue the story? Uh, and what made you decide <laughs> now is the time? Yeah, it's a good question. I swore not to <laughs> update it, you know, because it was exhausting. The story of film in Odyssey was 
you know, many years of my life and I traveled around the world and it, it was, you know, backpacking with my camera. So I didn't really want to update it, you know, but then guess what happened? The world changed, society changed, technology changed. There were new filmmakers coming along, new political movements coming around, along around diversity and many other things, you know. So the, um, the story of film itself broadened and deepened and so i thought oh, okay i'll have another go at trying to update it yeah no that's great it's so interesting to you know we we can't really see the historical view of our own time uh yeah. and you know what what will people say about us one day but it's uh, it's it's an interesting uh, thing to look just back at the, the last few years and it was an interesting experience to watch this because i'm so used to hearing you talk about films from further in the past mm. but with this i was already familiar with a lot more of the mm -hmm. films and there's quite a range for instance you open the film talking about the film joker the todd phillips film and then draw this really kind of deft comparison to disney's frozen which was unexpected but uh, and then you jump from there straight into cemetery of splendor from a peach yes. and pong where it's ethical so i'm curious when you're considering what films to include in a project like this uh, is that an easy decision are there a lot of films that you considered that ultimately didn't make it into the film I think it's quite easy in a way, Andrew. You know, I'm always looking for something that really jumps out, that is innovative and new. So I go to the cinema all the time just as a fan of movies. Mm -hmm. But when I see something like Booksmart or when I see mm -hmm. even something, you know, like Joker, which was a contested film in many ways, I knew that it was electrifying the medium of film in some way. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't even take notes. I just think okay that could that's useful somehow you know and so that's what happened in that case yes uh, there were painful things because i i left out a lot of stuff that i would wanted to include but it's very nice to try and take an overview that i ha i have here um uh, so my running order so when i make a film like this i scribble uh, <laughs> this is story of film you get it and what's the first thing it's um no it doesn't actually say joker there but but this is yeah. this is my script. Instead of a script, this is what I have. You know, there so you, you see, it's quite rough and mm. scribbled. But there, it says "Baby Driver" and "Lemonade" and "Ram" yeah, and "Hustlers" and, and uh, you know. So even in this very rough, it was on for quite a while. Even in that very rough draft, you know, the headlines are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. Um as we watch the film there's there's a number of moments that we see close-ups of faces some I and mean, we see some from films but some that are not from films that seem to be sort of s short selfie videos that are kind of interspersed and i noticed in the credits they're called dreamers um, and it really has an, a unique effect of kind of giving the entire project a really human touch you say mm -hmm. at one point that the human face is the center of the film world mm -hmm. i'm curious what led you to including the dreamers in the film and and how did you gather that footage yeah thank you for asking that um this film was made during the covid crisis or lockdown you know so i couldn't jump on an airplane and travel many places so there's a bit of new york a bit of madrid but not much else but i felt that you know and i'm sure you feel the same that during covid we were forced not only back into our own apartments to live a more private life but we were forced back into our own heads in a way you know and lots of us lots of us watched films for comfort or you know consolation you could say you know so i just went on social media and said look i'm making an update of the story of film and odyssey and i would i like the idea that you know w when we watch films we kind of dream together so i said if you if would any of you like to send me videos of yourself closing your eyes imagining falling falling asleep and i got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of them. It was really nice, you know, from all around the world. And you saw the bits that I used in the film, you know, they are, they are from South America and North America and India and, and Europe and Asia. And that was very, because COVID was a global thing, you know, it was first time in my life that we were sort of all doing the same thing together. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why I included those images. Yeah. Yeah. And it ties in really nicely with the Cemetery of Splendor discussion and, and this yes. kind of collective sleeping yes. uh, uh, of all of that. Um, well, 
one of the most fascinating portions for me too was when you talk about technology and yeah. um, sort of the technological innovations and how those are affecting cinema. So you talk about smartphones and GoPro cameras and VR. And I'm struck by how kind of open-handed you are when you talk about these things. Some people say that VR isn't really cinema, uh, but you disagree with that claim in the film. Are you yeah. ever skeptical of new technologies like that, or does it come naturally to be sort of accepting of changes in that way? Like, I, I'm accepting of change. Change is good. You know, we're all transitioning. You know, you're getting older and I'm getting older and everybody watching this is getting, you know, so ch all change is good, I think, you know. And I started, when I started directing in um, 1980-something, to shoot a simple scene, there would be five guys, usually all guys, in a room, you know, and now I can shoot it myself. And so the tech, the, the, the miniaturization of the process has liberated me as a filmmaker and as a storyteller. So usually when something new comes along, a new technology, I am, you know, I, I look and lots of people use it in a rubbish way or a conventional way, but then a lot of, some people use it in an imaginative way. And it's always been the case, any technology, the printing press, the photographic medium, anything. So I, I take a sort of ahistoric view that anything comes along, most of it it'll be used in an under-imagined way, but some people will see its potential. And I think VR is a classic example of that. I think it's wildly cinematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. And you, again, you highlight um, different filmmakers in the in the project and how they're how it's being used i always love watching and reading the work of film critics like yourself because i get to sort of see the movies through someone else's eyes for a period of time uh, and with that in mind you have some kind of interesting ways of categorizing and, and pulling out thematic connections uh, for instance you spend time talking about bodies in cinema um, spend some time talking about families and how they're depicted in cinema and how that's changed in in our times in recent years what is your creative process like when you're deciding sort of the different sections of the film and you touched on this already showing us the script there did you have a picture of those uh beforehand in your mind what what each of those would be and how did you then gather material to kind of make the decisions uh, based on what would be there you know so i'm a filmmaker right so what i do is get the structure first so in a film like this you know it's in two parts that you see you know there's it's it's at almost exactly two halves and so i work out the structure first and it's like making a building and once you've got the footprint as the architects call it you know the ground laid out then you can work out what the rooms are within the building you know? and that's exactly what happens for me so i always start with the structure and then i think okay so in this particular instance of story of film and new generation i'll start with films that were sort of innovative and then in part two will really jump the fence and look at the films that were wildly innovative mm -hmm. so that means that each time i see a film that excites me i think is it in the first half or the second half mm -hmm. so when you start with a structure you know it's really it's satisfying creatively satisfying mm -hmm. because then you don't feel lost i knew the shape of the film before i started well, I think we're just about out of time. One last question. Do you think you're closing the book on the story of film now, or do you imagine you'll ever return for another chapter? Yeah, I think probably I'm closing the book. You know, I, I, I just jump, I jump between lots of things. And I, just as my theme is innovation, so I want to innovate myself. You know, I want to reinvent my own filmmaking, you know, so I, I'm, I love this project that it's been part of my life story of films been part of my life for a long time i started it when i was in my 30s when i wrote the book the story of film so i i love it but you know you need to shake the dust from your sandals and move on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well that's great thank you so much for your time it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning and uh, uh we'll look forward to the the release of the film i'm excited to see see how people take it thank you for your time as well andrew